Earlier this year, DC gave us a new take on the Cape Crusader with the Batman, and it came with a new take on one of his most iconic villains. So riddle me this, what's mean green and has cling wrap all over? It's Paul Dano's Riddler. So here to talk to me about the new Riddler year one comic is Paul Dano. What's up, Paul? Woo, well, what an intro. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Well, we're excited to have you here. Yep. Uh, you know, uh, I feel like this is a super rare thing where an actor uh, plays, you know, an iconic uh, super villain in a big movie, then they get to write the comic telling us the origin story about that super villain. How did that come about? So one of uh, the things I do as an actor to get me uh, to get me into characters, I like to write out the backstory. Oh. I try my best to bring the life the character has lived to to the scene and to page one, and I try to get to a place where sort of the unconscious of the character is at work as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and in this case, I decided to write some of that backstory as if it had come from a comic because I wanted the archetypal energy, oh, yeah. you know, of the history of Gotham and the Riddler and Batman to, to come with us to set. We were trying to make something that was grounded but still had all that, you know, sort of big archetypal comic book energy. So one day I was on set talking to Matt Reeves and I said, oh, I'd seen this and I'd seen this and I'd seen this. And he was like, that should be a comic. And in my head, I was secretly kind of like, I think it could be a comic, you know. <laughs> and the next day on set, Matt was like, I spoke to DC, they want to talk to you. And I was like, no. okay, that was fast. Um, so I put together my thoughts and they dug it and we've been working on it for a while now. That's awesome, that's awesome. So what I really liked about your Riddler, it was very new, very fresh, and it reminded me of sort of like, Jigsaw meets the Zodiac Killer, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm interested to know, like, how does somebody become like that? So is, is that what the story will be? Will we see, like, how he becomes someone who would terrorize Gotham City with death traps? I, I suppose so, yes. So one thing that I love that Matt did with his script and his film was, I think there's something going on about the two sides of trauma, right? Mm. Bruce Wayne has his own trauma and becomes Batman mm -hmm. because of that and, and ends up doing good. and. I think Edward Nashton, unfortunately, goes down a different path. Mm -hmm. So my comic, Riddler Year One, on the plot level is about following the numbers towards corruption, but I think really it's an emotional horror story about trauma. An emotional horror story. Yeah. That is deep. I think. I like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Um, so, you know, this comic is being published as a six issue limited mini series under DC's black label imprint, which for those who don't know, that is like no holds barred. You can go R rated, M rated, whatever. You kind of do whatever you want because you're playing in your own sandbox, unconnected to the main DC universe continuity. So was that like freeing, knowing that you could just kind of tell the story you wanted to tell without too many restrictions? Yeah, I mean, they, they've, they've been great. DC, my editor is great. I've been working with this artist named Stevan Subic, who's from Serbia. He's not done a comic here yet. I'm so excited that I get to be the one to help share his voice because I think he's very good. I really love what he's doing and we have a super intense collaboration. Uh, and yes, for them to give us the keys with Black Label and say, do what you want, it doesn't mean we're, we're not gonna do anything senseless, but it does empower us to kind of take the story where we want it to go and I, I think we are both giving everything we have to it. Uh, and uh, I'm very happy to have this support from DC. No, that is awesome. That is awesome. I'm glad you brought up uh, St Stevan because he did a Conan the Barbarian comic. Yeah. And I remember thinking, this is just such dark, intense, like really just awesome, like powerful artwork. And when I heard, and, and now that I've seen the pages from the Riddler year one, the little mm. preview we got, I thought, wow, this is such a good marriage of like the, the type of story you're telling with his art. So yeah, how does his style help tell the story and bring out like the themes and stuff you want to tell? Well, Stevan's ink work is incredible. And you can feel his hand at work mm. and the ink on his fingers and his hand and how it's sort of, so he's really, there's something textural and emotional happening in his stuff that I think is really strong. Um, and him and I uh, have collaborated quite, I mean, we Zoom two or three times a week, oh, going wow. back and forth yeah. about panel structure, story, you give me notes on my writing, here's what I think about colors. I mean, we really have formed kind of a team and it's been much more, it's been much more like making a film than I anticipated. I think some, uh, comic books have a tighter deadline and there's a little bit more of an assembly line thing like Stevan and I are just kind of like in this thing together. You guys are just jamming. Um, yeah. We are, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not, we don't, we, we argue, we have our things, you know, we kind of are looking for the for the best out of both of us. Um, his Conan book in Europe is incredible. I don't even know if you can, 
I mean, you can get it here in the States, but it's not like, so I'm, I'm excited right. for I people Googled to check that. out his yeah. work more. Okay, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. One last thing. So, you know, speaking of the Joker, you know, you do share a scene like with the Joker at, at the end of the Batman movie. And so, um, I, in the sequel is in development, we know that, but you know, should you have the you know, chance uh, to revisit the character in a follow-up Batman movie, is there something you want to explore between those characters now that they've met? I, I, uh, I, I, I mean, look, I've been spending the past year writing this comic because I loved so much our film, mm -hmm. Gotham, Batman, all of it. So, you know, if, if they call me, I'll probably show up. Yeah. You, 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 you know, um, uh, but I haven't really dared to dream about what we might explore. Um, one, because it's, it is, frankly, it's out of my hands, but two, because sure. I've been daydreaming about this comic now yeah. for the past year or so, but uh, it'd be, be pretty fun to, 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 to get in there and, and get in there with another good actor uh, like Barry. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for talking to me cool. and in, indulging me in this nerdy debate. Uh, yeah, sure. yeah, I yeah. cannot wait, wait to read the comic. Uh, so IGN's Comic-Con coverage will return right after I solve the dozens of puzzles that Paul Dano just left all over our studio. Gotta stop doing that, Paul. Uh, uh, but we'll be right back after this.